Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Okay, so you have a block or you're rebuilding an engine and you're getting ready to take it to the machine shop to have machine work done. And you want to save yourself a little money and you're going to do that by removing the core plugs yourself or the freeze plugs. Now, there are three basic methods that I have seen and I have tried myself. They each have their plus and minuses and I'll show you what those three methods are. I'm not going to do all three because when I show you two of them, I'll tell you what the minuses are and why I don't do it. And then I'll finally do it with the method that I use. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a little extra tip of what to do before you take it to the machine shop. Now, first thing, when you do this, make sure the block is sitting so the freeze plugs or the core plugs are sitting on top and it's flat against the ground. I have it kind of rocking here a little bit, but that's okay. And the reason for this is if the plug accidentally falls inside the block, it's gonna fall straight down. If you have it sitting on the end, if you have the engine sitting on the edge and it's sitting straight up, if this falls in, it's gonna slide all the way down and you're gonna to have to fish it out of there. That happened to me once and it took me an hour to fish one of these core plugs out of a block because it fell inside and went inside the uh, coolant cavity, the coolant passages. Now, there are people who say that you can just knock them in and just leave them there. Well, you could probably do that. I think if they fall down in here somewhere, they'd probably stay there. They're pretty heavy. They're not going to float around. But I am not one to be a fan of leaving anything in the coolant passage or in an oil passage that could potentially float around, move, and block the flow of either coolant or oil. So I like to make sure I get them out of there. Now the first method I've seen and tried, and I just mentioned tech plug, it's actually tech screw. You take a tech screw, which are these self-tapping screws, and you run this screw into the center of the plug, and after you get that in there, you can take a pry bar, some kind of pry bar like this, get it underneath the screw, and pull out the plug. Now this can work, but the problem with this is that if you pull up on this and you pull the screw out of the plug because it's really in there, this plug is gonna fall straight in. So I'm not a big fan of putting the screw in there and then trying to pry it out because if you pull the screw out and it's loose enough, it'll fall straight in and then it's really tough to get out. The next method is simply the punch method. You can take a punch and put a punch on the edge of the, uh, of the, of the plug or near the edge and tap and the goal is with that is to tap on one edge and the concept is, is that there'll be like a, a pivot point here and this plug will rotate in the hole so as you push this down one end will come up and when it comes up you just grab some players on there and pull it out but if this is in there and and that you have a very narrow wall here for the plug you start to push this and if uh, you hit it hard enough and it doesn't pivot, it falls right in. I've had that happen to me too. So that's a minus. The, 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 uh, the screw in the middle, it can fall in. The tapping method, trying to get it rotate, it can fall in. The method I use, where I've never had one fall in, is to drill it and pry it. I'll show you that. The method I prefer is drilling a hole, and I use a step drill to do that. And I'm gonna drill a hole close to the edge of the plug, and I'm gonna do it either the top or the bottom. If you do it left or right, you have to remember that the cylinders are right there. And if you get too close to the cylinder and you drill through, you can run the risk of damaging your, your cylinder. So I'm just going to drill a hole close to the edge of the plug. Okay, don't want to go too far. And I'm going to make sure that the hole is big enough for the punch that I'm going to stick in there, which it is. So, next. I'm going to want to pry, first I'm going to try and pry it up and we'll see if it pops out. And you need a pretty strong punch to do this because you don't want to bend it and it's not going to come out. Okay, try the other way. <clears throat> it's in there pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to loosen this up but I want to keep this punch in here so if it does start to come out, it doesn't fall in. So I'm going to punch on the opposite side and then I'm going to hold this punch down with my hand and take my hammer on this side while lifting up on the other side.
and you'll feel it start to break. It breaks pretty quick. In this case, it started to break, but it's going straight down. It's not pivoting like the, uh, the method that I told you where you want it to pivot. It's not happening. Okay, so now you see it start to pivot. Now it's pivoting because I got have this punch in there and it's starting to pivot up. So again, I'm going to try. I'm going to do a little bit more. And if you get it far enough, you just get to a point where you can get a screwdriver behind it. So lightly tap it. Now it's not moving any further. So, I'll take a screwdriver, get behind it here, and I'm going to put a punch in there so it doesn't fall in. Pry it, pry it up. Gently, because you don't want to damage the wall of the plug hole either. Okay, now see what happened it's starting to spin in there but there we go now I'm gonna gently pry this out I'm trying to turn it so that the shavings don't fall in and look it pops right out so I just got that right out it didn't fall inside now the last thing I do with the engine sitting on the end and it's important to have the front of the engine facing up because that's where the water pump sits I take my blow wand or some kind of air gun and start at the top and just start blowing in your coolant passages there and then work your way down start at the top work your way down just stick this in there and blow some air in there the coolant passages in here inside the block all the way down and then finally uh, clean it off and just blow the whole, whole thing off now I'm going to show you why that's important now this is the bottom plug hole towards the back of the engine and I'm going to take a magnet and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to try and clean out as much as I can along the bottom. And I'm just going to just do a little bit here lightly. And we're going to see how much metal is free floating around inside of the block. Sometimes it takes a couple times if you have a lot. So after a few seconds, let's just pull this out and we'll take a look. And look at all that. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of sludge in there. See that? most of it most of it is rusted you can see that uh, rusted means it's been in there for some time you will find or you can find shiny metal flakes in there and that's if you drill, drill a hole and the metal falls inside but that is how much metal sludge is sitting inside the block floating around from the last time the block was either machined or it could have come from the factory that way so I like to go in a couple times Grown as much as I can and right at the bottom get everything that's settled out of there and you can see it'll take a couple times of cleaning this off just to make sure anything that's magnetic in there and anything metallic will come out and I don't have to worry about that sludge building up in the coolant and why is that important? That's important because if there's metal in there like this, this is going to continue to rust inside the block. And as you can see, this has probably been rusting ever since this block was, was made. This block is, uh, I think, from around 1972. So these metal, all this metal sludge has been floating around in there forever. And if you can get it out now, I try and get it out as much as I can. I do both sides. And that helps so when you take it to the machine shop, when they flush it out, you at least got a good portion of it out. So removing your core plugs is fairly easy. I did all six of them in about 30 minutes, including the filming, and it'll save you, I don't know, 100 bucks of machine shop time if you don't want to spend the money. The machine shop can remove it, but it's pretty simple to do yourself. Thanks for stopping my Peace Garage.